It's Monday on Digital Charcuterie, and we like to get manic. Hi, everyone. This is James. Joining me now is Andrew Fantasia. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, I'm just really disappointed that you don't play the Bengals every Monday, so I'm boycotting your channel. I'm sorry. I sh we, should, we should start that, and thank you, everybody that is tuning in right now. Thank you so much. The way this show goes is we kind of have topics that we want to talk about, and we have email questions as well that we like to get to. I saved one email question for a couple of weeks. That's the one we're going to talk about. Ooh, uh, beautiful. I mean, well, you, you'll like it. I just, when we get there, you'll understand. But we're going to go right into it. We're going to jump right into it. So thank you so much. Give us a like, subscribe, uh, comment, share, all that fun stuff. Uh, there's a, a rumor going around. The rumor the rumor mill is uh, really uh, circulating and, and working a double time. And I think it was Giant Freaking Robot, which, again, you got to take anything they print with a – not that they print – with a giant grain of salt. I throw out things. But we know, but we know that the GCPD uh, Matt Reeves Batman spinoff show that would have been the police department year one of Batman, whatever, has morphed into – the Arkham Asylum show, which seems to be getting, you know, some traction, I suppose, over there. Not like the Penguin show, which has been green lit. This one's got some traction. They're talking about it. But at, at these sites now, the rumor is going on that they're going to have Harley Quinn in this. And they're looking to recast Harley Quinn. Because as much as everybody can love Margot Robbie in that role, she would not, I guess, be the Harley Quinn in the Reeves universe. You'd have to have somebody else in the Reeves universe. And you know we did we got that Joker uh, deleted scene, and I saw a lot of people commenting about how Harley Quinn would not work in that world because there's no way somebody would fall in love with with uh, that Joker. And I, to me, that would actually make this more intriguing. Would make that Harley Quinn more intriguing is how could somebody fall in love with the monster? We've seen it, Beauty and the Beast. These tales have been told. I would really love to see this this demented version of that, perhaps. Uh, but the rumor right now is that. Um, Victoria Pedretti from, um, she's from You, the show You, and the house on, uh, what is it, The Haunting on Hill House, I believe yeah. is the name of the, yeah, and then the sequel to that one, which was The Blythe Manor, I want to say, was that the title of it? What's the title, Andrew? Am I getting it wrong? I think it's Bly Manor. You just Bly lost <laughs> 20 followers. I watched that one. I actually did not watch the... <laughs> Hill House Haunted Hill House one, but I watched the other one. She was good in it, I thought. But the rumor is that they that somebody wants her to play Harley Quinn in this. And I think, like I said, I think she's actually a pretty good, pretty good actress. I haven't seen you. I don't watch anything. I I watched the one. Um, I think she's pretty good. I always thought like if they were going to do another Harley Quinn, that um, Gardner from Ozark and uh, uh, the and a Delvey show. I thought she would make a really good Harley Quinn. Uh, she's a fantastic actress, but this, this, this fan casting, we'll call it a fan casting for now. I'm kind of on board with it. I think it's fine. Um, but, but my one concern, Andrew, before I get, to, before I let you talk is <laughs> I, I, I think, I think you, you don't go into Harley Quinn. If this is a multiple season one, you might get there, but I think season one, you got to do Dr. Harley Quinzel. You got to yeah. keep her an MD uh, and I think that would I think that would work beautifully in this. And then you could even explore if you do bring the Joker into the show on some level, which there are hints at that you know Matt Reeves kind of hinted that maybe he does play a factor in this. Then you can kind of tease up that demented romance that the two of them have. And I say bring it. Why not? Yeah, the more you see of the Doctor, the more effective it is when you see her as completely not a Doctor. Right, you, it, it's the, it, it's the whole Shining paradox of why Stephen King hates The Shining because Jack Nicholson is always creepy in everything he does, so it's no big deal to see him turn creepy in The Shining. So it's the same thing. Show us this woman as a normal woman, an intelligent person who's trying to help people, and then make it the tragedy of her story rather than just here I am, hey, <laughs> because uh, that seems to be their default setting anyway. So they can, I think they can play with that and they have the time to play with it because this is a series. I don't know how long it's going to be. Um, but this feels right, especially for this world, this twisted world of seeing her grow into that persona. Now, Victoria Pedretti, I can't speak on her. I don't, you know, I, the, the, those haunting shows, I did not watch James because I like sleeping and one of them cancels out the other. So I did not watch either of those. I haven't seen you 
So I don't know. I can't speak to this lady. I'm sure she's great. I can't think of anybody else in mind who I would put into the role. Again, I'm fine with not seeing Harley at all. Uh, but I think it's funny that people are fan casting this because I looked up her character's name on you. And do you know what her name is on you? It's not Harley, is it? It's Love Quinn. Ha! <laughs> of course, there you go. So I, mean, I don't know how much of that is out. just, yeah. Um, but hey, all the power to her. If, if she gets it, great. If they don't use Harley, great. I'm happy either way, honestly. Yeah, I'm fine with them not using Harley Quinn also, but I think an Arkham series, it almost is like it's begging you to use Quinzel's. You are begging you to use that doctor. And if you're going to use maybe like a Hugo Strange, why not have them all play together in this playground? And, you know, if this is Matt Reeves, I thought he did a brilliant job of having all of the rogues gallery villains play in the playground in the Batman. And I'd love to see what he's able to do with that in the Arkham show. And you don't have to, I mean, no one really has to be the, the standout of it, the star. I don't know what the show is going to be or who that would be, but just have elements of them weave in and out of it, I think could be great. And I think she's she's a fine actress and could, I mean, I don't know how she would be crazy. I think she could pull it off though. And I, I think, I, I just, I don't know how you use the Joker going forward if he's even going to be in the show. Like, can you get Barry Keoghan to be in the show? I don't know. But no. it seems like he was like, he loved doing it. I think, you know, like Colin Farrell doing the show. This is HBO Max. This isn't the like NBC or anything anymore. Like things have changed. The world has changed in, in, in entertainment. So you kind of wonder maybe he would if if the opportunity was rife. And I think a demented relationship love story. Every show has a love story. There's always a Ross and Rachel. And imagine being the ones <laughs> that one up Ross and Rachel with Joker and Harley in this. But that's like a side story to like maybe what Hugo Strange is doing in the forefront. I'm keep going to Hugo Strange. It just to me, I don't know, Andrew, it makes sense that Hugo Strange would be at the forefront of this Ar Arkham show in some capacity. Oh, and I totally. would just, well, you would think. But I just, I hope we get to see other villains like not Poison Ivy, not Mr. Freeze, the lower tier Batman villains, Nicolas Cage's egghead. I like little things like that pop in in this show. I think that would be the most fun for me as a Batman fan and as a fan of watching things on television, that's how you do it. Right. And I mean, you just, you do basically with Arkham, Andrew, what they do with the suicide squad, you give us these no name characters that no one cared about. And then you make them my new favorite characters. Right. And you can even take a page out of, because this is an HBO show, take a page out of something like game of Thrones, which was really good at being an ensemble story. Right. It was really good at here's 40 characters go. Uh, and you can take that formula and apply it to these people. I don't know if they're all going to be cooped up in this building the whole time. If that's the case, then you should probably look to the movie House Party 2, The Pajama Jam, as better inspiration. But like you, you know, if if it's if it's all centered inside this building, that's a different story. Then you might want to you might be making something very unique. But in terms of this being an ensemble cast, there you, you've got plenty to work with you have plenty of things in the past to show you how to do it right now i'll do it not sorry so i i i like the idea that this show leads that this show the penguin show are going to lead into the next batman movie but not the the what happens in this affects the next batman movie but indirectly in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and one thing is in that deleted scene clip of the joker is he gets those papers from the batman but he keeps a uh, paper clip in it there's a paper clip missing so that is mm -hmm. i guess hinting yeah that's hinting at his i guess uh escape from arkham which i'm kind of like and you know what i'm gonna do this video later i swear but there's a, uh, you know i want joker to be on the streets of gotham at some point in if this is a trilogy at some point in the trilogy or at some point in the second movie or wherever you know why i want him out i need him out to do a deed that i need to be done for the well, sake you of know story. who else wants this Barry, because that man spent what three yeah. hours in the makeup chair <laughs> to get a scene yeah. cut, so he's there he with you, too. and he loved that that scene. Showed. But I, but what I love about that though is they have that, and then you add the Harley Quinn element to it, which allows his escape. Because okay, he could get out of a room, but can he get out of a building? And if you have a doctor on your side in some capacity, you could maneuver and manipulate that in a way. So I kind of like that that deleted scene could tie into the Arkham show. That deleted scene, imagine if that deleted scene is the is the uh, cold open of the first episode of the Arkham show. I kind of hope, I mean, that would be cool, but I would also really like if they just attach it to the movie, just put it where it was supposed to be for the home release. Well, Matt, Matt Reeves says we're not going to get a, 
uh, director's cut. He said the movie is the director's cut. Okay. Uh, so I get like I'm I'm guessing that the paperclip that that I mean, well they got the paperclip there somewhere else. I mean you can if he escapes, you just you know the Joker escapes. So you don't really mm-hmm. need that detail in it, even though it kind of adds to it. Um, because there is like I love that scene, but there's nothing in that scene other than the paperclip, I guess, that we don't necessarily get anywhere else in the movie. Like everything in that scene we get elsewhere. And there are things that they do, I think, better in that scene than elsewhere, and vice versa as well. Um, just in and like I really think th- when Joker tells him that the Riddler's a nobody and Batman uses that, just the idea that the Joker gives him a detail to use against the Riddler, that mm-hmm. to me is just like that is that's some stuff that I love about these villains. And Joker doesn't even know who the Riddler is at this point. He, and he's still trying to get under the Riddler skin with it. And he's using Batman to do it. I just love, I love that. But I love the idea of uh, Dr. Quinzel giving us a true, even if she never turns to Harley Quinn, but the idea is there that she, she could potentially could turn and you keep that going throughout the series and then, you know, maybe she's alluded to in another movie or not, but you maybe she just leave her to the series. But you never know. Like, you're waiting for that demise. And the longer it goes, the more you're like, what's well, not going to happen? And then if it does happen, they can hit you with it. And then if it never happens, you're like, well, eventually it will, just not in this story that we're, we're seeing. Right. They could go a lot of places with that. So I'm fine with it. I'm fine with yeah. it. And in hindsight, now that you told me about the paperclip thing, I did not see that. I Like, I was totally – that went way over my head. But that was pretty dumb of Bruce to just hand that over. Like, what are you thinking, man? You're supposed to be a smart guy. Yeah, there's a few things that are weird in that scene. But I, look, I love the scene. I think I understand why. But a lot of people are, are complaining about the the Joker. They didn't like the way he was uh, portrayed oh, in it. The look is so, yeah, I know. I, but again, though, if you keep him like with those deficiencies, like the birth defects and whatnot, I just think using Doctor Quinzel, like it just adds such another such a nice element to it and it just it could strengthen the structure of the show and the universe just like this is a doctor who's going to go crazy I, I really i really like that aspect of it and i'm hoping to see it one day whether it's on here or not i would like to see that like i love margot robbie's portrait maybe you give it to margot robbie and she does like a joker style harley quinn i don't know but i just i love i would like to see more of that dynamic i i would actually like to see margot robbie I loved her in the Suicide Squad. I thought she was really good in Birds of Prey and she was okay in Suicide Squad. But I, I really, um, I'd like to see her get a little bit more meat on, on, on the bones of the Harley Quinn character going forward. Like something, I mean, she's been part of an ensemble and everything. I'd like mm-hmm. to see her maybe get, uh, cause she can act. That's like, she's a, she's, she's a quality actress. So I would like to see her maybe get some meat. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, Birds of Prey, she got a lot of screen time. No, no, not screen time. I mean the the character like Joaquin Phoenix got to act as the right. Joker. I like I mean that. like that. Yeah. I mean like she's having a great time. Don't get me wrong. And I don't want that in those movies. Don't also get me wrong on that. I'm just saying, give her something with some meat. Let's see what she can do with with the role. All right, Andrew. Let's move on to our next topic today. All right, and it's an email question. Ooh, I like those. The email question. It says, "Hey, James." Just wondering if you think Sydney will finally die in Scream 6. Andrew, I got this email like three weeks ago, and I hadn't seen Scream 5 yet. So I finally saw Scream 5, so I'm like, let's talk about it. And I know you're a big Scream fan. I'm a big Scream fan. I won't tell you my opinions on Scream 5 so much. <laughs> but but they're making Scream 6. They're shooting in Montreal this summer. It's for a 2023 release. They're just like getting these things ready to go. I think they said initially that they had a plan for like a trilogy or something. That well, Wes Craven definitely did when he made four. I think that might be the case with these ones as well. And for me, Andrew, when you're making a Scream movie, um, when you're making a Scream movie, you should plan sequels because you know, if you've learned anything from franchises, they always have sequels. And the one thing I wasn't crazy about the Halloween remake and I haven't seen Halloween kills, which I've heard very interesting things about. I haven't seen that. I wasn't a big fan of it, but one thing that I appreciate about it was that they have a three part story arc and they know where they're going with it. And it's all planned out. And because you need, I think you need that. And if it's going to be the ending of, of a character and franchises, that you need to plan going forward with it. That being said, the Sydney Prescott getting killed. I, I, I have to say, I, I think I I'm on the fence, Andrew, with the sixth one, because the directors come up and said that all bets are off. Now they've opened the floodgates have opened 
on the Scream franchise going into six, and they can they feel like they can do whatever they want. And I guess we'll do spoilers for Scream Five. So if you haven't seen Scream Five, I'd probably stop listening right now. Yeah, that's a big but, deal here. <laughs> yeah, because I think we're gonna have to go into it. So Sydney, I mean, I, I think going into Scream Five, I knew she wasn't gonna die in Scream Five. It's like you can't get rid of her yet. I think six though. And if they do a seven, if it is a trilogy plan, if you go into set, then you can. The one issue is once they made her a parent, I find a lot of movies have like are scared to do that to those type of characters. Um, Gail Weathers needs to get stop getting shot in the side. Jeez. But I but the thing you know what was funny about Scream Five to me though, and Scream Two is like one of my favorite movies ever made. And Scream Five was more of Scream Two than Scream One, but it thought that it was more of Scream One then scream 2 it was confusing because i was like no you and they even make references to things that happen in scream 2 that they're claiming is in scream 1 and i'm like no you're getting your movies mixed up i think scream like <laughs> randy doesn't die until the second one and they're making it sound like he dies in the first one and maybe he dies in the first stab mo- anyway the whole thing makes no sense but i think um i think you let sydney live through six and kill her in seven i mean at some point you got like nev campbell's got to stop coming back to these and and, uh, the other thing i will say andrew is i thought they did a really great job of bringing david arquette into this movie Mm -hmm. how he got out of this movie not so much but how he got into this movie i thought i told you this early like the force awakens ghostbusters star trek all these movies where they try to the requels that they that they're talking about they did the best job of bringing the legacy characters back than any of those ones I just mentioned. Now, I think Han Solo might have been used, utilized the best. Um, but actually, both him and Dewey have terrible deaths. So, I think, <laughs> but I think getting to the legacy characters, Scream 5, for me, crushed it. So, I love this question because you're right. She can't last forever. Um, and this, you know, we don't know where this is going. We don't know if they have a plan to stop or if they're just kind of playing it by ear. You know, are they just going to see how well it does and then green light a part seven? We don't know if, like, if they have any kind of plan. Um, in my opinion, though, and you are fresh off the five boat, right? So you can tell me if I'm wrong or crazy. But after watching five... I feel like the most interesting thing you can do in six is have Gail be the killer. Oh, this question revenge. comes from Sarah. Sorry, this question comes from Sarah Fawcett. Sorry, I couldn't find the email. I have to splice it in and editing. Sorry, Sarah Fawcett with the question. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It, it might make sense. I I think though, Andrew, the killer should be. The sister. So they should gotta, gotta just let that one go. Like just like you were all along. She was the one. G- g- See, she was she, the most sus character in that whole movie until she, she wasn't. You're right. Yeah, like she should have been. I think the, the problem, you know what the problem with the Scream movies is now? And it started with Scream 2. This was the problem starting with Scream 2. The internet. Because all of a sudden, mm. like with Scream 2, they had to change the killers part way through. And I think they actually can't change the killers for the better. But like they had to change the killers because the, the script got leaked on the internet and Scream 2. That's in the 90s, man. Before the internet was like a thing, people were on the internet spoiling movies. And, that, and then Scream 3 obviously had a lot of problems with Columbine and stuff like that. And then Scream 4 had a lot of problems. But now they're like, they're like we wrote 700 different endings. And then when you watch it, like, what? That's the one you went like I like the problem is the they the problem is you're trying so hard to to fool the audience and trick the audience and not let them al- follow you along like deceive them like oh no that's not the killer that's the killer that's the killer and the one thing Andrew that that these movies need to do if it is going to be Gale what they need to do to get to that again in my opinion as someone who just watched 5 is you've got to make the characters characters and I've got to be with them the whole time and I've got to fall in love with them and I want to be best friends. And Scream 5 started that way. I told you, one of my favorite scenes was when they're all outside, all the suspects are outside hanging out at the table just like in the first Scream yeah. when they live, live her alone. But that's what Scream is. It's like you get, I want, like, bring me a part of this t- of these of this friend group. When I'm in the friend group, then when they start dropping, I care. And then when the killers reveal, I'm like, you son of a gun. Like, I didn't want you to be the killer. Why would you do that? But this movie, it, it was focusing way too much on, on the sister in the hospital room. 
and then the uh, the stuff all around it. And it, it, it I just think if it's going to be Gail, you've got to bring Gail back into the forefront of it, or the anyone that it is has to be in the forefront of it. And I've got to be along for the ride with them. And they they kind of hit it. I do think that the boyfriend in Scream Five. I thought he was pretty good in it actually, and he kind of had it on that, but he was pretty obvious from the get go. When you look at a few things, he's the first one you see after the title screen. Billy Loomis, he got <laughs> slid in the hand. Jerry O'Connell, like there, and he appeared at, like out of the blue. Jerry O'Connell, like there were little things in there that kind of like set him up to be it. And of course, he went to the basement. As soon as he went to the basement, I was like, well, it's definitely him. The guy wouldn't still be alone, wouldn't be alone or anything. And now he's going into a basement. Are you stupid? So. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think just Andrew, I just think when you're going to make someone the killer, not that this has to do with Sarah's question, but if you have, any, if you're going to make someone the killer, you got it. You got to get me on board with them as a character. And I've got to feel it because the problem with the Amanda character in screen five is she's in it. She's bitchy. And then she's gone. Like she just leaves. And for some re reason, the sister who I can't even remember the character's name just left her only other inhaler at her friend. Like that made no sense to me. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> don't force the plot as part six, but I think you can kill Sydney in six because killing Dewey gave you permission to do that. But when, once you get rid of Sydney, Andrew, then you've got to figure out what this franchise is about. That's right. And I mean, they're laying groundwork here for, I, I wish I could remember the sister's name, but I can't, I, I she wasn't the most interesting character to me. Billy's uh, Sam, Her, the main Sam, character was Sam. Sam. This is why yeah. it's Sam. I read this. I read this 20 years ago in an article, Andrew, when when female characters are named Sam in movies, it it, it gives the uh, it's usually male writers that name them that because it makes you think that they're tough and gives them a backstory of, of like oh, wow. being yeah I read that I'm like oh like it's subconscious or something like that like they do that and it's it's <laughs> I laugh because I'm like yeah everyone is kind of yeah so that's wow, that's weird yeah. Um, yeah Sam thank you Sam uh, yeah I I wish her sister had been her the younger sister had been the main character instead because she was just more interesting um, but it really feels like they're laying groundwork for Sam to be the new Sydney. Uh, like that was, they could not have made that more apparent, but see, that's the thing because this franchise really plays by its own rules so much. And it's always looking inward so much because the quote unquote par for the course, normal rules for a legacy sequel is to pass the torch. I think it would be in Scream's best interests to deviate from that and not do that and keep this, keep Sid and have her do her thing and maybe have her doing something parallel to what Sam's doing because otherwise it's playing by the rules of Hollywood as opposed to pointing out the rules of Hollywood and kind of distancing itself from them, which is what these movies have been doing. So right, my see, vote I've, is I've... don't kill Sid. See, I found in this one they were playing by the rules instead of pointing them out. They were pointing them out a lot, mm -hmm. but they were, but they they were pointing them out, and then they weren't doing what they should have done with the rules. They were making dumb choices and stuff, and that's what was kind of annoying me while watching it. Because like, no, no, like when when Sydney says it's always about a dumb a dumb girl going up the stairs instead of out the front door, then that happens moments later. There's a reason for that happening. Like they they kind of show you, like, oh, the door's jammed shut. She has to go up. Like they justify things and they play into it. And also, I think the, the my one thing with Scream though is I really hope they do get back to the relationships of the characters more. Like I really I like the twins. Like you really like the twins. I wanted to like the twins, but again, they just disappeared for half the movie. They like yeah. I want them to stick around. Like Randy as I love Randy's my favorite. I was so happy when he died. I don't scream too because that's what these movies are about. Like, I, I, as much as I didn't want him to die when he died, it's like, yes, because now anyone can. Like, the minute it's fair you game. kill off a main player, yeah, anyone can. And this one, like when when the sheriff died, I thought, okay, well, that's kind of you're. They were kind of forcing it a little bit too much. And then when her son died, I was like, but I haven't got to know him yet. Like, I'm not that. Like, I just found out that's his. That's her son. Like, I I needed a little bit more on that for for me. I just thought they needed to. Give me more of those characters. I hope they get more to that. And they let the the commentary on the film commentary be kind of the underlying of it on the characters live in that world, not the world living with those characters, which is what I thought Scream 5 was too much of. So I, 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 I yeah, I, I mean, you can let Sydney live. I don't know if she should, maybe she'll probably just end up being the killer at some point. I think though, once you've given her kids, the, the ball game has changed a lot. 
in that. I, you know what? I always thought a cool idea for Scream was if they did a new nightmare route with it. And they were like, they kind of played a new nightmare where it's happening to people. And then you have like, I always just have this image of it happening. Like Scream happens. And while it's happening, like there's like the Tonight Show's on. And Jamie Foxx is like, there's a movie. Stop doing it. Like you could just like, Jamie Kennedy. Did I say Jamie Kennedy or Jamie Foxx? And I said, said Foxx. Yeah, well, Jamie Ke- Jamie Foxx would be good too. Why not? But Jamie Kennedy yeah. would be on there going like, I just watched Spider-Man No Way Home. But Jamie Kennedy would be like, it's a movie. Stop it. And then it'd be like, you know, Red Carpet and Nev Campbell would just be like, no, we made those movies for entertainment. I think that would be the next step of Scream for me is like take it wow. out of the movie into so- the real world. <laughs> Do like a like a this is the end thing where they are just playing themselves, like Nev Campbell. Yeah, but they're Nev not. Campbell. Yeah, but they're not. Unlike New Nightmare, they're not part of the movie. They're like right. in the background. They're like, stop it. These were movies, and it's happening to actual kids in that universe. That's kind of I don't. know. They're not going to go that route, obviously, because they've established they've established good characters, just not enough. Like we just didn't get enough of those characters. And and I think the fact that the twins like everybody survived, but um, uh, the blonde guy and his mom like everybody kind of survived, so it, it leaves you enough room to play with them in the sequel. And I hope they do. I hope I hope we get more of them. Um, yeah. Because also like th- like the the one thing too is is like Randy's niece and nephew. The niece knew all the movie rules, but we never, other than her being related to Randy, there was no real reason to know like. She has that one moment about stab, but we never get to know her enough. Like Randy worked at the video store. What do you do in 2021, 2022 now? Like, where do you work if you're into I movies? Know. Right. So th- I would like to see that kind of stuff played out because all of that made Scream that, like, as much as Scream 2 is my favorite, Scream 1 is brilliant on how it handles everything and plays with everything. And, but it, all those first two movies, even the third one, it keeps those characters front and center. It keeps the characters front and center, and the murders just happen. Like, there's a scene in in this movie in the hospital where she's watching Dawson's Creek, Kevin Williamson created both because Scream was just Dawson's Creek with murders. Yeah, <laughs> and I want to get, exactly. I want to get back to that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. And I want to, I, this is just me being selfish, but in the sixth one, I want more of the stab franchise. Cause I, that is so entertaining every time they show, just uh, talk about it or just talk about how it was made and how many there are. Like, I can't get enough of that. Yeah. Give me more stab. Yeah. No. Yeah. Th- like, I, there were elements of this that I thought were fun. The stab stuff has ever since, uh, I guess, part one with the book. I like stab has been such a big part of the Scream franchise. And I, I will say the opening scene in this one, I don't know about you. I got every question right. Every question right. I was like, <laughs> I'd be safe. I'd be safe. And and Aaron, my wife, was uh, hated every second of watching this movie with me because anytime there was a music cue or a callback, I was like, I was like the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. I'm like, oh, like. <laughs> I just I love Scream. Um, yeah, I was disappointed by this one, but whatever. I'm like, I'm gonna watch six. Don't get me like six. Oh, I'm yeah. in the door, you know, all all in. Uh, I just hope they I just hope they focus on the on the characters a little bit more. All right, let's move on to our third and final topic today. The director of Morbius has recently said that we're going to learn <laughs> that there is a Spider-Man in the Morbius universe, and uh, his understanding is we are going to get to know who that Spider-Man is soon. <laughs> So speculation has run rampant. Is it is it Toby Maguire, which seems what fans really want? Is it is it uh wait, who did I say? I said Toby Maguire? Mm-hmm. No. Andrew Garfield is the one that fans really want in this uh mm-hmm. universe. Toby Maguire, they want Spider-Man 4. And then there's Tom Holland, who I, I think after the events of the post-credit scene of Venom 2 and um, no Way Home. I don't think it makes sense for it to be Tom Holland, except for the fact that Venom knows who Tom Holland. But anyway, I just, it's my brain hurts. No, you're I right. don't right. think it. It doesn't make sense. But also, Venom does know who Tom Holland's, unless he just knows who Spider Man. Uh, anyway, the the point that I'm trying to make is, uh, no one knows. Sony, I don't think has any idea because if the post credit scene leaks are real. Anyway, we d- I already did a video on that. We've talked about that to death. We don't need to go into that. But Spider-Man is clearly in this universe. I and mean, you need, Sp- I think you need Spider-Man. You're doing Craven, Madam Web, uh, Morbius, obviously, and Venom. And you want to create a Sinister Six. You've got to have someone for the Sinister Six to go up against. And Spider-Man is your hero. So for me, Andrew, I've been saying this for two months on this channel now, or a month, whatever it's been. For me, I, I think you-, you don't use Tobey Maguire. You don't use Andrew Garfield and you don't use Tom Holland and you have, or you use, let me 
rephrase this. You use Andrew Garfield, but he is not your Spider-Man. Your Spider-Man in this universe is Miles Morales. You give us a Miles Morales film or something, <laughs> appearance something in one of these movies. I don't know when. And you make that at your Spider-Man here. Then you completely separate this Spider-Man from all the other Spider-Man. There's no more confusion. It's also a brand new character, a character that worked very well in Into the Spider-Verse, a character that I can tell you from my nephew, kids definitely love this character. They love his suit. He looks super awesome. You bring Miles Morales in as your Spider-Man. You keep Tom Holland there, and then you can bring the three of them in, and then all of a sudden you can bring the four of them in if you really want. So I think in this universe, uh, it's got to be Miles Morales. <laughs> this movie is such a... <laughs> wow. All right. Um, I just love yeah, a I... week before it comes out, the director spoils it all. He's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, the ending. <laughs> it, it feels like... Uh, uh, never mind. That, that's a whole other tangent. Um, I agree with you, though. I think Miles is our best bet. If you have to go, like, if you absolutely have to go with one of the other three, the only one you can go with is Andrew Garfield. Um, yep. Because Tom is his own thing. Tom's doing it. That, that's his own pocket. And the thing with Toby is Toby already had a Venom, and it wasn't this Venom. So you can't, like, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, they, that Brock and this Brock are completely different things. So Garfield's the only one where it fits. And Garfield's movies are also, they look the most like these. Like they are the most kind of shadowy and just kind of bland, right? Like Toby's is basically 1963 and everything is colorful. And Tom's looks like the MCU. These movies just look like shadowy uh, streets and not know, really. Even... Amazing 2 is a nice looking movie though. It was more colorful than Amazing 1 for sure. Uh, but they are definitely the most, like, they have the dullest color palette of any of the, the three franchises. Um, and it, like, it fits the most with what these two, these Venom and Morbius things are doing. But I agree. Go with Miles because, A, we just haven't seen him yet in live action, so why not? Uh, B, he's popular. Everybody loves him. And C, it's a great way to distance yourself from the other things uh, to avoid the mess of it all, because let's be real, Sony has not proven that they are good at connecting those dots the way that Feige is, right? They just, now granted, have they had a lot of opportunity to practice? No, but if they can just build their own thing from the ground up with Miles or whatever, they can get better at that instead of trying to connect the stuff that already exists and possibly screwing the pooch, because it from the looks of this, I mean, a pooch will be screwed, James, this week. So, right? Like we... Yeah. Something's happening in a couple mm. of days. We're going to find out. I, I Yeah, I think you got to get... I, I think you just go Miles Morales or Spider-Gwen. You just... You, keep, you separate yourself yeah, enough. There you go. And, you, and you don't worry about anything else. And you kind of you kind of just let it go. I, I don't know. Th that's just how I feel. Like, why... I think bringing Vulture into Morbius might turn out to be the biggest mistake they made in that movie it might not have been in the original cut which had him in it more and i don't know like before they worried about multiverse crap that might not have been a mistake because maybe morbius just lived in that universe and then someone else was like no this is its own universe and now it's apparently it's also the venom universe as well so i just think <laughs> that might end up being the biggest mistake they make maybe they should just cut michael keaton out of this movie completely if they really want it like if they're really trying to separate it because I think they don't, I don't know if they care or if they understand how the multiverse works. Uh, they just want to make their movies, which is fine. They want to make their sinister six movie and have all, you know, their catalog of Spider-Man characters do what they do, which is fine. That's their, that's their right. They paid for that. They paid mm -hmm. and they could do it. But I think we're in an era now <clears throat> where the MCU has basically made it, the standard that you either have your shared universe or you do what the Joker and the Batman did and you just make a damn good movie and you say, no, we just want to make a damn good movie because we're passionate about it. And Sony seems trapped somewhere in the middle 
and not in the good middle, like the underside <laughs> of the middle somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I haven't quite figured out. I hope they, I hope they figure it out eventually. Um, but we're going to, we're going to have to see how that plays out. I just think if you get rid of the sticky situations that are the three Spider Men that we have, and you give us someone brand new in the role, but you don't make him Peter Parker Spider Man, you make a Spider Gwen or Miles Morales, and all of a sudden, I think, I just think you're laughing all the way to the bank because also. Also, what that does is it gives you more chances to make Disney, Sony, Spider-Man movies with Tom Holland in the MCU. And you get to do your own Spider-Man movies, which people inevitably are going to, you know, you're going to force feed the Sinister Six into them anyway, which you've been mm -hmm. trying to do since Spider-Man 3. So it just gives you that opportunity again to do it. So, you know, I mean, we're in an era now where more is where more is more and we want more. We want three Batman in a year. We want three, four Spider-Man in a year. We want it all. Just give it to us. And they have the means to do it, but I don't know if they have the know-how. Yeah, it's the Ian Malcolm of it all, where it's like you spend so much time wondering if you could even ask yourself whether or not you should. Uh, and they don't even really seem like they could. I don't know. And I, I really I feel like such a big old drag every time we talk about this. And I probably come across so negative and so jerky about it. Um, but it is, I mean, this, this is the, I've never seen an example of a studio that had less faith in a motion picture. Like I've never, it is wild. I'm, I'm going to be like thinking about this build up to this release for the rest of my years because of how wild it is and how I like, it is completely unlike anything we've seen in terms of just trying to sell a movie to audiences. It, it, like they could not be doing it more wrong. Every step of the way, I think they're, they can't do it more wrong. And then they top themselves. Uh, so I'm just, I'm it, uh, right now it's just sheer morbid curiosity, right? No pun oh, intended. I can't, I can't, morbid, <laughs> I can't, I can't wait till Thursday when I go see it. And I, I can't wait to walk out of that theater and I'm hoping I have a good time. I was trying to look at old Venom reviews because Venom wasn't the most positive received movie. But you know what the difference is between the Venom? Not, no, so I got to clarify. There's no official reviews for Morbius yet. I believe the embargo lifts Wednesday, which kind of I think that tells you where it's going to land on that. Yeah. But, the, but what we've heard, though, early words, if it's all true, which they all seem to line up the same, is Venom, all the negative reviews still said, it was fun and they said it looked like you know tom hardy was having fun there's elements of fun in those and glimpses of positivity whereas the venom stuff is just like like there's nothing positive to say about it so i'm curious um i'm, I'm curious where i'm gonna land on it. i'm hoping for a good time i don't want to spend money on a movie and not like it that's my thing same so of I'm course hoping it's fine yeah so i'm hoping it's fine we've we've beat that to death. Anyway, Miles Morales, oh, no. Spider Gwen. Let's let's get that going. All right, we're gonna wrap it up here. Yeah, yeah, you should. All right, and they just made a, a video game with them, so this could add to that too. Like you just keep that brand brand going. All right, Andrew, we're gonna wrap it up today. Why don't you tell everybody about your book? Oh, this book right here, Science Scroller. This one that I wrote. How did you know about that? Have you been spying on me? I've uh, been spying on you. I have a camera where's, in here. That's <laughs> where's your copy? What's your favorite page? Tw uh, Twenty-seven. Oh, okay. I'm going to check that right now and make oh, sure. Oh, my copies. I can, I can see my copy right now. It's too far, though. 27 is a page where a chapter ends. So you must have just yeah. been like, when can I put this book I like, down? And it's, I like short pages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you want to buy this, you can buy it on Amazon right now. Just look it up, side scroller. Look me up, Andrew Fantasia, and it's right there. And if you don't like paperbacks, there's ebooks too. So you're covered either way. And you can find him on YouTube at Andrew Fan, uh, YouTube. Oh, yeah. Those Andrew Fantasia, those. <laughs> and over at the Rebel Scum Podcast channel. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. It really means a lot to us that you spend some time with us. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.